Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering creativity. I'm Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. Just a heads up, everyone, that my new book, Lessons in Gratitude, a memoir on race, the arts, and mental health, published by the University of Michigan Press, is now available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. I encourage you to check it out. Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Graham Parker, who serves as the CEO of the Louisville Orchestra. Graham, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Well, so I'm so excited to talk to you. And of course, the orchestra is one of our wonderful creative partners. Um, and especially, I wanted to kind of talk because it seems to me that kind of this, this topic about the role that orchestras play in their communities is so important. It's something orchestras are talking about in all arts organizations, for that matter. Um, and I, so I was wondering kind of how you view this at the Louisville Orchestra, and especially kind of thinking about, you know, you Years ago, people started this idea of creative placemaking and kind of curious, how do you feel and, and how are you guiding the orchestra in terms of its role? Yeah, great. Well, Aaron, thanks for having me on and excited to chat about this. Um, I, for us here in the Louisville Orchestra, very much inspired by Teddy Abrams, our current music director, who's been at the helm over 10 years. He uses an expression that actually also connects to our past, and I'll, I'll go back there in a second. but he uses a phrase that is very inspiring to all of us, his idea of artist-driven civic leadership. The idea that an arts group is actually part of the, the civic growth, the civic uh, reestablishment of a city uh, and the people and communities and neighborhoods and not a one directional relationship where the direction is bring yourself to our concert hall and experience us in our hall, actually, no. Our role is to be part of connecting throughout the city and also what can we be part of as the city struggles with equality issues, access issues, economic, um, e economic equality. How can the orchestra be central to that um, uh, what's the set end, uh, what, what's the end of that idea of how we can be involved in all of that rebirth, regrowth, et cetera. And I think at the orchestra, it very much speaks to the founding of the orchestra, which I didn't know until I got here, which is a fascinating story. The orchestra was founded in 1937. Um, it's a, quite an old orchestra. And Louisville at that time was in the context of other kind of Midwest or Midwest Southern cities, was an enormously powerful powerhouse city, bigger than Cincinnati, bigger than Atlanta, bigger than Nashville. There was a catastrophic flood in 1937 uh, that nearly shut the city. Thousands were left homeless. We're talking 20, 25 foot flood flooding of the city. And the elders of the city at that time actually contemplated shutting the city. Like we won't recover from this. Luckily, they didn't do that. And as they set around to deciding what were the key pillars of a new Louisville, amazingly, this is also a leadership, kind of a leadership idea, they decided that an orchestra was essential to the regrowth of Louisville. And that was one of the very first things they reestablished, or no, not reestablished, sorry, established, was an orchestra, professional orchestra. Wow. And I think that DNA, that idea of out of catastrophe, out of true life and death, comes creativity, comes resolve, comes service, comes access. And I think that DNA, without question, has been locked in um, to the orchestra from that moment. And I think Teddy is the the next, you know, reincarnation of that same impulse to serve to be of to be of service to the city than we've ever seen in our 80 plus years 
Wow. So first of all, I mean, just that history is is extraordinary and literally totally I love how you describe that in it's literally in the DNA of the founding this civic role um, uh, of the orchestra and I also especially like this kind of artist driven civic leadership and this role so this is right fantastic and this obviously this approach um, but I know that a lot of times you know and we have people watching like okay so that's a great you know, idealistic approach and all that. How does that manifest, uh, right? How can I make it happen in my community, et cetera? So curious, are there one or two things you could share of how you're realizing that or uh, either through programs or initiatives or even your leadership approach that's kind of implementing that in the way the orchestra um, resides in Louisville? Yeah, so uh, thank you for that question. So I would say starting simply Yes, I think it, from a leadership perspective, from my leadership, the culture I can uh, bring forward and highlight and enhance is this, is this idea of service, that our audience, whether they be in the hall or just in the city, we are of service to them. And that is a critical thing that I think the orchestra feel, the staff feel, the board feel, that that's, that's our job, is, is to serve and enhance and enrich. In terms of how that manifests in day-to-day -day programming, um, we have made a very, very significant commitment to be of service to communities that have historically been left behind by this by this orchestra and many arts groups in Louisville. Um, you know, through awful you know historical decisions around housing policy, Louisville, like many cities, has a red line, a historical red line, a race red line, where we call it West of Ninth where, you know, what was a very integrated neighborhood, but starting in the 1900s and certainly through the 40s and 50s and even continuing to the 60s, the black community were left behind in the in West Louisville. There was white flight to the east and, you know, and they were just forgotten by the city, by education, by by services. We have made a very, very significant commitment to bring the orchestra multiple times a year, the full orchestra with our music director into community centers, free of charge. We work with, and we do wraparound services. We'll work with food and security organizations, food banks, so that if you come to the orchestra show, which is free, you also can take care of food for your family. You can take care of, uh, there could be uh, wellness uh, partners doing blood checks or, so we're kind of trying to make it like a complete wraparound, uh, which, which has been hugely impactful. and. It started off by building trust in the black community because it's like you've forgotten this for generations. Like now you're back and it's like building, rebuilding that trust. Um, so that has been a huge thing. Um, we also have made the same commitment to the entire state of Kentucky, where again, this was a new a learning for me that the tension here in Kentucky around the urban rural divide, the tension around Louisville versus the perceived resource allocation across the Commonwealth has left many, many communities feeling they have been completely forgotten by, by the state. Uh, true or not, I, that's the perception, and as we all know about perception. Um, so we really dove into this head, head first, went and spoke to the General Assembly, Republican-led General Assembly, working with the Speaker and the President of the Senate. Um, and actually, two, four years ago, uh, three and a half years ago, we were able to secure $4.3 million from the General Assembly of Kentucky to be available to the entire state of Kentucky through regulatoring of Kentucky. The whole orchestra with our music director free of charge. We have now done 19 shows in the last two and a half years around Kentucky, and we just got a renewal of the appropriation for another 4.3. So again, this idea of service and showing up and making it accessible and equitable is the fundamental difference, I think, that the Louisville Orchestra acts out every single day than maybe others in our, in our field. I love that. And obviously, two very poignant uh, examples. And also, I just see how much it demonstrates to be able to have that commitment from the legislature is clearly 
the the people of the state defining this is important we want this to be part of the investment uh on the part of our state literally so that's fantastic and and, and amazing uh examples of that uh, obviously coming to fruition um so unfortunately we are just about out of time but i always like to ask of all my guests so this work obviously extraordinary fulfilling but there has to be tough days and days where it seems like the appropriation may not come or you know whatever uh, other uh, challenges might arise and just curious as a leader as an administrator administrative leader, do you have either methods or best practices that you use in the tough times that might be of help to others? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think for all of us in these roles, like the, the separation sometimes of personal success and professional success gets very merged. And we kind of regard a professional failure or a slip or a deficit or a, a gift that doesn't come in. We take it personally i mean not literally take it personally if it's some kind of judgment on us and i think that's my work as a leader of just these things are separate and you know remembering that you know on a personal level am i taking care of my well-being am i taking care of my family am i around enough um you know i think that, that balance it's it's an ongoing work it's ongoing work i personally have invested in a executive coach for years um my own it's my own expense and this is something that I have found enormously helpful, just to have someone that can reflect on leadership issues, questions of personal priority, you know, struggles. It's an incredibly powerful resource. That is tremendous. Graham Parker, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for everything you're doing in Louisville and for Kentucky. And thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks so much. Just a heads up, everyone, that my new book, Lessons in Gratitude, a memoir on race, the arts, and mental health, published by the University of Michigan Press, is now available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. I encourage you to check it out. <laughs> Thank you.